All right, so this is the third video in the span of 24 hours. The more frequently we post, the worse it's probably getting. Eight hours ago, I made a video about the prospect of NATO trying to create the precedent for intervention in Ukraine under the guise of some radiological or nuclear incident. They gave Russia an ultimatum, or at least they're trying to draft a resolution that will give Russia the ultimatum that if they detonate a nuclear bomb or there's some issue with the nuclear power plant that they will immediately intervene it will be full-on conventional warfare against the Russian military, which of course would quickly bring us across the nuclear Rubicon, and it would be Mad Max for all of our children. Just eight hours later, Moscow is now apparently in some pseudo state of martial law. Guys, I was out in the sticks today. We're laying the foundation for the building of a very small off-grid cabin and I don't think I could have picked a better day because by 3 p.m. mountain time the tweets and the texts started rolling in that apparently something is going down in Moscow. Now on its face what this looks like to me is that Moscow is preparing for war under the guise of some possible civil unrest. It's very hard to know what's going on right now. This could all be theatrics. Now if it was it would be very elaborate and it would be Academy Award winning performances because you've had General Sorovkin rock the mic. You've had the top generals involved in this. And of course, Evgeny Prigozhin. If you don't not familiar with the situation, I suppose I should not assume that everybody's familiar with what's going on. This is what's going on. Moscow is currently in a state of martial law, more or less. There's military vehicles in the streets all over the place. They're preparing for what may be a possible coup d'etat, or at least this is what some sources are saying. There's mixed messages on both sides as per usual. We don't know if this is just some extension of an elaborate counterintelligence operation by one Evgeny Prigozhin, which is the head of a Wagner organization, a private group contracted to fight in Ukraine, or if this is the real deal. If Evgeny Prigozhin is currently riding towards Moscow or Rostov, there's numerous reports of columns of military vehicles going here, there, and everywhere, and they're going to try to do some sort of uh, military coup. Now, of course, either way, and this is what a lot of the NAFO Ukrainian crowd is getting wrong, this is not a good thing for Ukraine no matter how you slice it. The last thing you want is a destabilized Russia who is going to be far more quick to take more aggressive actions in Ukraine. And you also probably don't want an overthrow of the current Russian MOD. If you think that they are not executing this conflict in the most efficient and optimal way possible, then you probably, what is that old saying, you know, don't interrupt your enemy while they're making a mistake. Uh, you don't want a more hawkish leader in there. Now understand that the only way Prigozhin gets within any distance, any uh, striking distance of Moscow or anybody of importance is if Vladimir Putin lets him because they can take them out like that. They simply don't have air power. They don't, you know, if Moscow really wanted to, if Wagner was on its way to Moscow in 50 mile columns of vehicles, they would be wiped out. They would be entirely decimated by, you know, air, uh, the Air Force. So that's not really the concern. Now, Prigozhin claims that he's not trying to do a coup, that this is a protest, okay? And uh, is this just two stubborn old men fighting with each other, or is this just theatrics? What would Russia stand to benefit? from these types of theatrics. Well, right now, apparently, and again, this is all white noise because everybody's just chirping away on Twitter and uh, Telegram. And right now they're saying that the 35th and 36th Brigade of the Ukrainian military are currently getting ready to re-enter Bakhmut because of the vacuum that may have been created or the counteroffensive is preparing to ratchet up because of the vacuum that's created with the Wagner forces. But as far as I know, I could be wrong about this, Wagner, hasn't been fighting for a while. The Russian military took over Bakhmut and the Chechens took over in other places. So the likelihood of, uh, I don't think the Ukrainians would be stupid enough to necessarily fall for this, but either way, understand, if Russia gets destabilized domestically as a result of this, you're gonna see a far more aggressive and less measured response from Moscow in terms of their execution of this conflict. And if, Sergei Shoigu and friends get the boot 
and somebody replaces them who is more hawkish, like maybe General Armageddon, uh, Sorovkin, if he gets in charge, then the you got to understand that it was the Wagner who wanted to use nuclear weapons. Okay, this is the guy who says they need to use nuclear weapons as soon as possible. That's the guy who is allegedly, and I say allegedly because we don't know, nothing is proven. It's a lot of bluster right now and uh, a lot of uh, scuttlebutt, as they say. So we just don't know what's really going on. But understand, if he gets in a higher position of authority, which I don't think he will, because again, he's, he's a made man. He's not really a, a lifelong military man. So he doesn't understand the process. He freaks out when he doesn't get the ammo and he doesn't really truly see things from the perspective, I bit my tongue there, from the perspective of a, of a general where you need to understand that you don't freak out just because you've lost one battle. You have to stay stoic in your attitude and understand, you know, you, un you see the battlefield from an aerial perspective. So you don't freak out because you're losing one battle because you know in 90% of everywhere else, everything is going fine, right? So I don't think he's emotionally stable enough to hold that level of position, but what do I know? Uh, it could just be, uh, you know, the beginning of, you know, some resignations possibly of the Russian MOD. But understand if Putin wants this guy gone, he's going to be gone and it's going to be over and that's going to be the end of it. But what concerns me because of all the data that we've been sharing with you guys, and you got to go and watch my last two videos because I don't want to keep having to rattle everything off. Uh, all of the factors which are contributing to massive nuclear escalation, imminent nuclear escalation right now, be it military exercises, what's happening on the border, what's happened in the last few months, the deployment of various nuclear weapon systems, the lack of any nuclear treaties. I mean, the time to prep is now. Do not wait. If there's thing, if you're on the fence with this, if you're like, uh, you know, should I, should I do this one thing that is towards prepping right now at this point in time, if you've just kind of been on the fence and you've been reluctant to make a decision in life that is, and I'm not talking about anything drastic. Don't never do anything stupid. Okay. It's not going to be the end. We're going to survive. We're going to get through this. Okay. I hate reading these depressing comments about how, you know, I just want to drink myself to death. Snap out of it, man. You are empowered in knowing what could potentially come. Most of the world is asleep to what's going on right now. If Moscow, if the military trucks are rolling through Moscow, this is just one scene, okay? There are several uh, military police vehicles on scene in Moscow right now. If this is truly unfolding, to me, this seems like this is what you would see in the run-up to a DEFCON 2, DEFCON 1 situation because all sides are going to lie to their populations. They're going to subtly massage it into our population. In Moscow, they have a culture of preparedness. They have a society of preparedness in Russia, whether it's the training that people get, you know, the uh, military service that they have to do, the bunkers, the underground subway system, and they just have a culture. The Cold War never truly entirely ended. Whereas we have commercials that say go inside, stay inside, and wait for the TV. That's probably not going to come on for many, many decades, if ever again, if a nuclear war actually breaks out. All sides are going to lie to their population and try to massage the truth in there. The question is, is this new level of military lockdown in Moscow, is it going to go away? I don't think it's going to go away. We've seen increasing militarization of the capital. Okay, and it's tit for tat. It's a constant escalator. They send depleted uranium. They send F-16s. They send longer range missiles. Ukraine says that the offensive hasn't even started yet. They're saying the same thing today. The Ukrainian commander says, we haven't even started yet. Okay, and then you have the attacking of the Crimean Bridge. You have the Wagner getting pissed off at the MOD. This is all pointing towards and culminating towards imminent escalation and people... If you're of the belief that nothing bad can happen and nothing is ever going to happen, if you're stricken with normalcy, normal syndrome, then all I can say, man, is we tried to warn you. Okay, we really, we really tried to warn you. And I just can't believe that I picked today as the day to start building a little off-grid cabin in the woods. I just can't believe that this is the day. And there were some other, you know, I don't like getting 
mystical or superstitious, but there was just some other things that happened today that showed me that I was where I was supposed to be and I was doing what I was supposed to be doing on this very day. Okay, things are heating up. And uh, apparently Russian media was hacked with, you know, images of Prigozhin on the screen. We don't know what this is all about. We really don't know what this is all about right now. I mean, this could all just be a ruse. Like I say, we really don't know. Uh, there's even talks that there have been uh, clashes between Wagner. Wagner accused the Russian MOD of actually conducting airstrikes on their servicemen while they were fighting on the front lines that the Russians, in fact, attacked them friendly fire. Of course, the Russian MOD denies this. Okay, and now this is why they're staging this protest in the form of a coup d'etat. But if this is true, then Prigozhin is on his way out, if it's true. Now, he was just filmed. I believe it was in Moscow. He was filling out the forms that the Russian Ministry of Defense, uh, a contract that they had to make that basically relinquished control to them in terms of, um, you know, just centralized control a bit more. So you're seeing more centralized control. He apparently signed it, and there's video of him signing it and delivering it begrudgingly, but he still did so, and uh, now this today. And there, there's people saying, well, he's, he's going to Rostov on Don, that that's where they're en route to. That's, you know, that's in the opposite end of Moscow. I don't know why Moscow would be militarizing like that if where they're saying that these columns are heading is Rostov on Don. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. This is the appeal by General Sorovkin. He says, I urge you to stop. The enemy is waiting for the internal political situation to worsen in your country. You can't give this to the enemy at this difficult time in our country. It looks sincere and he's not the only top general with this same backdrop in this same room, clearly, and it looks like, does he have a gun in his hand? I just realized, whoa, does he have a gun in his hand? That looks like a gun in his hand. I didn't see that the first time. Oh man, oh, whoa. This could be serious, or this is Academy Award winning. He's got a rifle in his hand. Holy shit. And he looks sincere. I mean, he looks dead serious about this. Because what Wagner is doing now is they are they're going through these checkpoints. And the Russian military apparently is not engaging them. So, at least so they claim, right? Now, like I say, ultimately... I don't think they want to have to take out Wagner because there's a lot of people who apparently support Wagner and this would definitely create a major domestic unrest. So Putin is going to be tasked with deciding how he is going to navigate such a situation. And uh, it's not going to be easy, but you know, if anyone can do it, I think Vladimir Putin can schmooze these people over. Apparently, Russian Spetsnaz it was raiding the Wagner Center in St. Petersburg. And uh, it was almost midnight there. They enact the fortress plan. So what is the fortress plan? Well, this is martial law, essentially. If you ask me, this is what you would see in the run-up to nuclear Armageddon. Russia's security officials have introduced roadblocks around Moscow amid growing concerns about the risk of an attack on the capital. Hmm... Wagner Group leader Evgeny Prigozhin appears to have provoked the response following an explosive audio recording released earlier this evening. He said, The Council of Commanders of PMC Wagner has made a decision. The evil that the military leadership of the country brings must be stopped. Remember, the evil that the, the, the military leadership of the country brings must be stopped. He wants more aggressiveness in Ukraine. He wants more ammunition. He wants to be able to not have his hands tied anymore. And he wants to be able to execute this war in the way that, you know, Americans executed wars in Iraq and Vietnam. Just carpet bombing. That's what these guys want. That's why the NAFO crowd who is cheering on Prigozhin and they're, they're starting to say, oh, you know, I actually like this guy now. I think, you know, Prigozhin makes sense because Prigozhin is saying 
he's criticizing the Russian MOD's incompetence in their uh, executing the conflict. So they're cheerleading this. What they don't realize is what they're going to get in, in exchange for Shoigu is probably somebody who is going to be far more indiscriminate and less concerned with collateral damage. Numerous telegram channels have cited sources which have claimed that the Kremlin enacted its fortress plan in the Russian capital. The so-called Kraypost plan is rarely used and is intended to repel an attack on a security force installations in Moscow. We already know they got air defense, which they've of course used for drones, electronic warfare. They got S-400s lined up there. They're ready for war with NATO. Is this all just cover for preparations for the final battle with NATO? Because we know that there's been so much military activity on that side of the fence in the past couple weeks. And everything that's been going on, the radiation stuff, the dam. I mean, guys, if, if you don't see how this situation is escalating while out of control, you're blind. And Darwin is going to have your number. A Russian news agency, Riamo, claimed... It implies an emergency gathering of law enforcement personnel and taking control of especially important objects of the Ministry of Internal Affairs, the Federal Security Service, or the Federal Penitentiary Service. The plan also provides, and remember that most Wagner soldiers, as far as I know, it is a voluntary organization somewhat, but there are a lot of prisoners, okay? The plan also provides for blockading the buildings of law enforcement agencies in readiness by the forces on duty to repel an external attack. It has even been reported that there is panic inside Vladimir Putin's inner circle about the scenario of a civil war. A lot of people support Wagner. So what Russia or what Putin will do if he wants to navigate this correctly is he's going to have to make some concessions. You don't want to just start, you know, taking out, you could just take out uh, Prigozhin, but then you got to deal with all of his disgruntled followers and his lieutenants and all these people who may be loyal to him, if that's even the case. I mean, you know, he's a made man. He's not a military man. So it's hard to say how loyal a lot of his, his men are to him. But uh, you still have the public who generally has, uh, at least as far as I know, generally a positive attitude towards Wagner. Prigozhin, who is known as Putin's chef, made several disparaging comments about the conduct of the Russian military in Ukraine. He slammed the Kremlin for lying, Russians, to lying to Russians about the justifications for invading Ukraine and even alleged the Russian army shelled a Wagner camp. Now, I don't know how true that part is because, of course, this is uh, clearly a Western slanted uh, media report. But he did claim that they shelled a Wagner camp, okay? And, of course, there's been the ongoing issue of not providing enough Weapons. The Wagner Group added, we are 25,000 strong and we're going to get to the bottom of the lawlessness in this country. 25,000 are waiting as a tactical reserve, while the strategic reserve is the entire army and the entire country. Everyone who wants to join us, he says. Well, I mean, that that's definitely treasonous statements right there. That is uh, either going to get this guy's head uh, on the guillotine or this is all just theater and they're just preparing for nuclear war. We need to put an end to this disgrace. The Russian Ministry of Defense has rejected Prigozhin's statements claiming his comments do not correspond with reality. A very subtle response to some pretty serious accusations with the exception of Sorovkin, who's holding a rifle when he's giving uh, Wagner this ultimatum. The statement added, the Russian armed forces continue to carry out combat missions in Ukraine. The National Anti-Terrorism Committee also claimed the allegations spread on behalf of Prigozhin have no basis. In connection with these statements, the FSB of Russia initiated a criminal case on the fact of calling for an armed rebellion. We demand an immediate stop to the illegal actions. Are they going to continue with this soft approach? with their own guy. Man, the Russians got patience. That's all I can say. Guys, get ready because the shit's going down. I'll keep you updated if I hear anything else. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.